Very few books have impacted my life to the same degree as A Guide to the Good Life. This book takes ancient stoic philosophy and turns it into practical tips for how you can improve your overall psychological well-being. And in today's video I'm going to share three key concepts from one of my favorite books of all time. Hi and welcome to the book lab, I'm Bjorn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations when it comes to philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential and today we're talking about A Guide to the Good Life by William Irwine. And I discovered this book quite early in my reading career, it was one of those books that was the right book at the right time for me. It introduced me both to stoicism and the art of living and I can see a clear divide of who I was before I read this book and after. By adopting the Stoic principles in this book, uh, it has resulted in 95% less road rage, 40% more gratitude, 30% less judgment and gossip, a 50% boost in insult immunity, and 75% more practice of voluntary discomfort, a topic that I will cover more later in this video. And 100% more philosophy books in my bookshelf and in my reading list. And that's more than you can ask of any book, I guess. Imagine finally getting what you've desired for the longest time. The following weeks and months, the newness start to fade and with enough time, the initial appreciation is gone. This is hedonic adaptation. We work so hard to get what we want and we quickly lose interest in what we work so hard to attain. In this book was the first book to introduce some stoic countermeasures to this effect and I want to highlight two of them, uh, one being negative visualization and the second one being voluntary discomfort. Make a habit of imagining as vividly as possible the loss of possessions and loved ones. This will help you appreciate the things you have and the people around you more fully. It might sound macabre, especially imagining the loss of a child, but let's face it, nothing is forever, we are, no one is immortal. Quote. To see how imagining the death of a child can make us appreciate her, consider two fathers. The first takes Epictetus' advice to heart and re periodically reflects on his child's mortality. The second refuses to entertain such gloomy thoughts he instead assumes that his child will outlive him and that she will always be around for him to enjoy. The first father will almost certainly be more attentive and loving than the second one. When he sees his daughter first thing in the morning, he will be glad that she is still a part of his life and during the day he will take full advantage of the opportunities to interact with her. The second father, in contrast, will be unlikely to experience a rush of delight on encountering his child in the morning. Instead, he might not even look up from the newspaper to acknowledge her presence in the room. Voluntary discomfort is the practice of depriving yourself of things in your life in order to appreciate their real value. It's a way of building resilience and toughen up beforehand for occasions of misfortune. Some examples could be to sleep on the floor. Don't drink for a day. Underdress for cold weather. Read comment sections online to elicit anger and practice equanimity. Emulate poverty by dressing in shabby clothes and sleep under a bridge. Turn down wine when offered. If the idea of voluntary discomfort uh, piqued your interest, then check out uh, the video I made uh, about the surprising benefits of voluntary discomfort where I dive more in depth into this topic. If you don't yet have a philosophy of life or if you're still in the process of uncovering the principle on which you want to build your life on, then this, this book is definitely a must read. I've read it four or five times now and it still holds up each time. It has some repetitive parts but I can, I can forgive it for that. I, I think this is a book that should be on every person's bookshelf and I put it on my great books list. I have a full list. This is my hall of fame. This is the best books that I've ever read. I put a link in the description if you want to check that out. It's also the book that introduced me to um, Stoicism and it's a great introduction to it. And since I read it, I've also looked into uh, more of the original philosophers and read uh, Marcus Aurelius, uh, Seneca, Epictetus, 
so it's a great uh, gateway book if you want to start to look into Hellenistic philosophy and Stoicism in particular. One thing that I forgot to mention in this review is how practical this book is. The author has done a really good job of translating ancient Stoic philosophy and its practices into something that can be applied to modern life. So even though the philosophy is old, it's 2000 years old, uh, it's still super relevant and applicable to the life we live today. And I really appreciate that. Let me know in the comments, what book marked a new era in your life? This is definitely one of them. Uh, I would love to hear which books those, those are and pick some of them up and add them to my reading list. For upcoming books, I, I'll soon have a review up of I Am Dynamite, A Life of Friedrich Nietzsche, a biography of the German philosopher, uh, a book I really enjoyed, so I'm looking forward to recording that one. I'm also rereading Spiral Dynamics, Mastering Values, Leadership and Change. This book tries to map up the progression of human value systems. It's a super interesting interesting read and I'm back next week with more reviews and don't forget to push the like button and subscribe and share this channel it helps me reach more people with great books I put out a new video every Thursday so see you next week until then Bjorn out